Hello everyone, in today's lecture we cover Act 5 of She's Troops to Conquer. At the very beginning of Act 5 we see Hastings on the stage. He actually feels disappointed and frustrated because Mrs. Hardcastle decided to take Neville to Betty Grey's house. And as you know from uh, She's Troops to Conquer, from the previous lectures of She's Troops to Conquer, um, Hastings has bored his heart out. Uh, to Neville and now he is reaping nothing but disappointed so he is at this point ex experiencing a huge let down um, uh, Neville and Mrs. Hardcastle went to Pedigree's house in a carriage and Tony was leading them on horseback also at the, at the very beginning of act five uh, we witness the arrival of uh, Charles Marlowe who Charles Marlowe is Marlowe's father and he is of course holding a conversation with Mr. Hardcastle. Now um, their conversation is all about uh, Marlowe's um, uh, deception and how he treated Mr. Hardcastle poorly because he thought him or he mistook him for a common innkeeper. Now this is the topic of their uh, discussion. Now we also um, see Ms. Mr. Hardcastle surfacing something which is um, the fact that Kate doesn't have a huge fortune she only has a small fortune um, uh, Charles Marlowe um, is a prudent man he says um, we do not need her fortune we need um, just a virtuous girl and this is actually very prudent of him now they also discussed uh, how the how marlo and kate are infatuated um and this is actually brought up by mr hardcastle he he um, tells uh, his friend that he walked in on them and they were grasping hands ardently so apparently they are infatuated and fortune is not a um an obstacle uh, to their union now we see Marlo uh, comes in. Um, Marlo um, uh, apologizes over and over to Mr. Hardcastle for being impudent, for mistaking him for an innkeeper. But Mr. Hardcastle says, uh, "It is okay. We are um, just having a, a. We are just loving it, uh, laughing it away, uh, and it is uh, nothing." Okay, it is cleared up. Um, and also he said that his daughter, uh, Kate, will not uh, um, dislike him for that. Uh, Marlo also expressed that he is um, the proudest of her approbation, approbation of her acceptance of him. And uh, there is something strange in this conversation. Um, uh, for Marlo because Mr. Hadcastle says that um, it is okay to be impudent uh, with Kate with my uh, he didn't say my daughter but with Kate with Miss Hardcastle because girls like to be played with and this actually is astonishing um, to Marlo because he didn't play with um, with uh, Mrs. Hardcastle okay um and you remember from the previous lecture, we said that uh, Mrs. Uh, Miss Hardcastle slipped in uh, a plain dress and she pretends to be a barmaid with Marlowe. Now, um, Marlowe insists on the uh, on the fact that he didn't pass his impudence on the rest of the family. He was uh, impudent to Mr. Hardcastle alone, and he described his uh, his conversation, his encounter with Kate, as formal, modest, and and uninteresting. Formal, modest, and uninteresting. He didn't um, show her any form or shape of. Of impudence, so um, it is unfair to accuse him of being impudent to 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 Miss Hardcastle uh, herself. Uh, and also, he says, "Heaven is my witness." Um, 
like I wasn't impudent to her. And here we see a uh, also a um, a contradicting view on the situation, um, because from one hand we have Mr. Charles Marlowe who believes that his son is actually submissive and modest when he speaks to women, and this is and this is a um, a trait of Marlowe and uh, Mr. Hadcastle who who sees the opposite because he walked in on them and he was grasping Miss Hardcastle's hand. So we see here a two contradicting view on Marlowe once again. Now, um, they decide to speak with Kate on the whole situation to see whether uh, Marlo was impudent to her or not. Now, they questioned her how many times um, uh, did you meet uh, Marlo, uh, in which manner he talked to you, and all these questions. So, um, uh, she, uh, she was assiduous and she was scrupulous. She told them uh, or she tells them of everything that went on uh, between them. Uh, she says that they went, uh, they met several times, and he um, treated her in a civil manner. And also, she talked about the fact that he ended uh, his conversation with her or her speech with her in a very tragic, in a tragic tone, and a pretended rapture, uh, pretended rapture, pretended happiness. Um, of course, she is speaking um, about the situation in which she um, deceived him as um, she slipped in a plain dress and pretended to be a barmaid. Now, he, uh, here it is the, the contradiction or the incongru uh, incongruent um, uh, view on Marlow, congruent views on Marlow um, uh, concerning this whole situation. Mr. Charles Marlow believes that uh, his son is really modest and uh, submissive with women, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Hartcastle who believes that he was impudent to his daughter, and he actually flirted with her. Now there is a suggestion um, proposed by Kate. She says, okay, I am going to meet him and you see by yourself if you do, do not believe in me. If you, do, if you do not believe me. If you do not believe me, you can um, hide behind a screen and hear over our uh, conversation, me and Marlo, and see if he is impudent and informal with me or not and they agreed to her suggestion now we go back to hastings to hastings and tony um now hastings um uh, on the stage he is waiting for um for tony and put this in mind that tony never goes back on his words tony never goes back on his words um, um, he um, uh, promised um, Hastings um, uh, previously, and he is actually keeping his promise. So now Tony um, comes on the stage, he meets uh, um, Hastings. Hastings, of course, uh, feels um, so happy to see Tony again, because that means um, uh, the plan is well executed. Now. Tony is spattered with, with mud, is spattered with dirt, like there are, he is stained with, with mud and dirt um, because of the journey, because he, he, he was supposed to take Neville and Mrs. Hardcastle to Bedigree's house. Now, uh, he is back and he is spattered with mud. Now, uh, from uh, their conversation, we get to know that Tony deceived Mrs. Hartcastle. He, uh, he, he told her that he is going to take her 
to, to Badigri's house, but actually he deceived her. He led her to think that they are going ahead um, uh, uh, to Badigri's house, that they are miles away from home, whereas they are actually in Mrs. Hartcastle's garden. You see, here, uh, even at the very end of the play, we see another form of deception. We see deception one more time, and that is what comedy is woven of. So, um, he led them to believe, or he led Novel and Ms. Mrs. Hartcastle to believe that they are miles away from their house, whereas they are still in the garden, okay? Um, uh, that is his, um, his trick. Now, Mrs. Hartcastle is in a very bad uh, condition. Um, she is sick of the journey. Um, she thinks she is 40 miles away from her house. Um, uh, but uh, she is actually in her garden. Now, this is the plan um, or the bargain between Hastings and Tony. Now, since he deceived uh, Mrs. Hardcastle into believing that she is far away from uh, her house, whereas she is still in her garden, now he uh, tells uh, Hastings to go uh, and take uh, Neville and elope with her. And the horses are ready the carriage uh, is ready to take them wherever they want to go so uh, here you see at the very end tony advises him to take neville and whip off at once to whip off to fly off to take her and elope now let's uh, go back like we are now talking in retrospect in retrospect yeah um uh, backward to the to the journey we see um mrs hardcastle had so many incidents at that night uh, so he is leading uh, her in circles tony is leading mrs hardcastle in circles they are in the same place but she thinks they are heading um forward to to Bedigree's house and she had so many incidents in one night she got drenched she got sunk with mud got drenched got sunk with mud um she overturned uh, in a ditch overturned in a ditch it, Now, I, as I said, um, Mrs. Hardcastle had so many incidents in one night. She got drenched in mud, with mud. Drenched, um, it means sunk. Okay, she is all wet from head to toe. Um, she is over. She was overturned in a, in a ditch. Overturned, toppled in a ditch. Um, she got st uh, stuck in a slough. Got stuck in a slough. Slough, swamp. She got stuck in a swamp, um, uh, and she is actually now uh, frightened of robbery because there uh, are hijackers uh, on the road, robbers, stealers, thieves on the, ro uh, on the road, and she is afraid of being robbed, actually. And uh, Tony plays on this chord. Tony plays on this chord. Um, she is uh, frightened, and he is just maximizing um, her, her uh, feelings of Tara. So he says, um, for instance, and these are very funny situations if you read the dialogue. He says, for instance, um, there are five high, highwaymen, highwaymen, uh, robbers on the road, highwaymen, uh, two of them only are hanged and three of them are roaming around and they might, they might not find us so he is uh, frightening her to death and she actually um do you think that mrs hardcastle is gullible why does she still believes tony after the 
tens of tricks that he played on her. Okay, this might gives us an insight that Mrs. Hardcastle is actually gullible, or, or or maybe because she loves him so much that she cannot think otherwise of him. Now, um, Tony uh, uh, says um, they see uh, like um, a shadow coming towards them, a, a human shadow coming uh, towards them so um she is now really frightened she thinks that yeah it is the highwayman that they are uh, that she is uh, uh, afraid of uh, so tony um, advises her to conceal herself in the thicket the thicket the forest to to conceal herself in the thicket so as not to be um not to be caught by the robber and he says if the situation is really bad i am going to cough now of course um this uh, shadowy human being that is uh, that is coming towards them is mr hardcastle is mr hardcastle he is outside uh, of his house taking his night walks of course tony knows it is um uh, his uh, father-in-law and he also is going now to play another trick on Mr. Hardcastle so he uh, he tells Mr. Mr. Hardcastle that he has um, uh, taken his mother and Neville to a degree's house and he is back okay um, but Mr. Hardcastle is not really convinced because he heard another voice uh, Tony says no I was talking to myself uh, he says no there is another uh, another voice I am going to seek out this other voice uh, of course uh, it, it is Mrs. Hardcastle's voice uh, Tony tries to detain him but he insists there is another voice I am going to seek it out uh, now um, and Mrs. Hardcastle hears this doesn't really hear the, this whole situation, but she can see and uh, um, and hear um, their uh, like uh, bits of their uh, bits and pieces of their conversation. Okay, and she thinks that Tony is interacting with with the highwayman, whereas it is the other way around. It is not a highman, um, a highwayman. It is Mr. Hardcastle. Now, uh, she is really frightened and thinks that this man is going to kill her son, her beloved son. Now, uh, Mrs. Hardcastle is extremely frightened, so she ran to Mr. Hardcastle and she knelt. She knelt down, she came down or on her knees and begged him, please highwayman, um, do not kill my son, um, if you rob me, okay, rob, rob me uh, and kill me, uh, myself, not my son. And Mr. Hardcastle was actually surprised because this is um, his wife, so she was almost at, the, at her wit's end. She is at her wit's end um she of course uh, was blinded with fear um she couldn't um she didn't see or she didn't recognize her husband uh now as she she is getting her senses back she recognizes her husband and of course she get to know that this is tony's trick and mr hatcastle also thinks uh, or Got to know that this is Tony's a trick. Um, l let's read this extract from the, their dialect because it is so funny. Mrs. Mrs. Hardcastle running forward from behind, from the thicket, because Tony told her to, to conceal herself in the thicket. From behind, oh lad, he'll murder my poor boy, my darling. Here, good gentleman, wet your rage upon me. Wet your rage upon me. It means... Um, Whatever uh, bad thing you uh, want to afflict my son with, you can afflict it on me. Uh, take my money, my life, but spare that young gentleman. Spare my child if you have any mercy. 
هاتكسل ماي وايف از اي ام ا كريستيان مستر هاتكسل از سربرايز ذس از هيز وايف فروم وينز كان شي كوم بيكوز توني هاز جست تولد هيم ذات شي از ات بيديجريز هاوس اور وات داز شي مين مسز هاتكسل نيلينج تيك كومباشن اون اس جود مستر هاي واي مان تيك اور ماني اور واتشز All we have, but spare our lives. We will never bring you to justice. Indeed, we won't, good Mr. Highwayman. Mr. Hardcastle, I believe the woman is out of her senses. Okay, she's went crazy. Um, what, Dorothy, don't you know me? Mrs. Hardcastle, Mr. Hardcastle? As I am alive, my fears blinded me. But who, my dear, could have expected to to meet you here, in this frightful place, so far from home? What has brought you to follow us? Now she um she um hasn't yet discovered that this is Tony's trick. She still believes that she is. far away from home and um, all of a sudden Mr. Hatcastle is in front of her. Okay, she is at her wit's end. Uh, Mr. Hatcastle, sure, Dorothy, you have not lost your wits. So far from home, when you are within 40 yards of your own door, within 40 yards of, uh, of your own door to him, this is one of your old tricks, you graceless rogue. See how he humiliate, humiliates Tony. He humiliates Tony, uh, calling him a graceless rogue. Um, you to her, don't you know the gate uh, and the mulberry tree? And don't you remember the horse pond, my dear? So the swamp in which um, uh, Mrs. Hardcastle uh, got stuck uh, is actually the horse pond. the horse pond uh, of uh, their stable. Mrs. Hardcastle? Yes, I shall remember the horse pond as, I, as long as I live. I have caught my death in it. Tony, and it is to Tony, and it is to you, you graceless violet. I owe all this. I'll teach you to abuse your mother, I will. Of course, Mrs. Hardcastle now is uh, mad at Tony um, because he abused her. Um, and that is why I, I called her or described her as gullible because she believes him despite everything that he does to her. Now we see um, uh, Tony says, um, all the parish says you have spoiled me and so you may take the fruits on it. And this is really prudent. This is really prudent. Even Mr. Hatcastle admired the way he, he put it, the way Tony put it. All the parish says you have spoiled me and so you may take the fruits on it. It means... You, you reap what you sow, honey. Now, we go back to the subplot in She Stoops to Conquer to Novel and Hastings. Now, we see that Novel is not actually interested anymore in eloping with Hastings. Not because she doesn't feel um, that um, he loves her enough to do that, but Actually, because she thinks that it is better um, uh, to to have a proper marriage, to have a proper marriage, to live a proper life, not a life of uh, elopement. So she decides to what to get the consent of Mrs. Hardcastle, Mr. Hardcastle, and have a proper marriage. She and Hastings. 
have been building up their hopes of happiness and they do not want to um, they do not want to bring it to a letdown when they discover that after their elopement they have just a momentary a temporary uh, a temporary um, uh, happiness because of uh, all the problems that their elopement will bring on them um, so it is um, it is better and for their own advantage to have a marriage and Mrs. Hardcastle consent. Now, if we go back to the main plot, which is um, the now the current situation between Charles Marlowe, Mr. Hardcastle, Kate and Marlowe, um, here we see, I said at the very beginning that here we have a, um, a contradicting view uh, on, on Marlowe, on Marlowe's behavior with Kate. Um, uh, Charles Marlowe puts a condition on this whole um, concealing themselves behind the screen situation. He says, if Marlowe is really um, impudent to you, um, I will um, I will plead him guilty. But if you are the one that is um, accusing him of being so, whereas he is submissive and uh, submissive and modest with women, as I know him to be, you are not going to be uh, my daughter-in-law. You are not going to marry my son. Now, Marlo enters. Now, Marlo likes to meet Miss Hardcastle for the last time because he would like to set out to start his journey away from this, uh, this mansion. Um, and he said that he is resolved to, 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 go, to go away uh, from her and the obstacle because of the uh, the the impending obstacles uh, the impending impediments to uh, to their union which is the lack of or disparity of uh, of background the inequality um, of their background education and fortune these are all roadblocks to their union or to their marriage and actually, the, the reason behind that is uh, because Marlo starts to feel that he, can, he cannot um, feel uh, towards anyone the way he feels towards this barmaid. So even those roadblocks start to lose their weight on him. Um, and even his emotions... Um, or his feelings towards her start to what start to surmount his reason to to um, to surmount this obstacle and start to affect his reason. Uh, so he is afraid of this because um, why do I feel so deeply and immensely towards this woman that even the obstacles that I have in mind that I think uh, we are going to face are now melting away in front of me and I cannot go along without her. So he is actually frightened, frightened of his own emotions, of his own feelings towards her. Now, um, as, they, uh, as he is uh, saying so, um, Mr. Hardcastle and Charles Marlowe enter. They are concealing themselves behind uh, a screen and they are uh, listening. Now, Marlowe also expresses um, a, a feeling um, towards uh, Miss Hardcastle. Please do not forget that Miss Hardcastle now is sleeping in or um, in, in a plain dress and she pretends to be a barmaid. 
Now, he says that he is infatuated with her beauty, like every moment past. He, his passion towards her is growing um, deeper and deeper. Um, even uh, he feels that he can surmount any obstacles uh, that is going to... Um, to um, uh, to impede their union or their marriage. But now even uh, his fears are melting away. Why? Because he feels that um, he can get married to her. Even um, uh, if we um, consider the um, inequality of fortune, of education and parenting, now all of that is melting away. And he, he tells her, I am, I am going to get married to you. Okay, no matter how different we are. And here um, he speaks of his father's discernment. Discernment is the ability to judge. It's the ability to judge. Um, even uh, it refers to judgment and taste at the same time merging together. So he says that um, if my father can see what I see of how um, fine you are as a woman, uh, he even will not consider uh, the, um, um, the small amount of fortune that you have or the no fortune that you have. Now, Kate rejects that. She says, I do not want to uh, you to torment yourself over the situation. We are going to have uh, um, many obstacles, uh, we might have uh, uh, happiness, we might be happy for a short amount of time, but eventually you are going to repent all of that because and it is not worthy. It is not worthy to sacrifice all that you have for a girl like me. It is really not uh, it is not worth it, okay? So I do not want you to spoil everything that you have uh, to ruin your reputation in the um, uh, uh, in, in the high society that you live uh, that you live among uh, for a transient love. Transient here means momentary love for a transient um, uh, love or relationship. I do not want you to repent. I do not to. Uh, I do not want to afflict you with all the confusion that is coming to come with our marriage. Uh, pay attention to this. No, Mr. Marlowe, I will not, cannot detain you. Do you think I could suffer a connection in which there is the smallest room for repentance? Do you think I would take the mean advantage of a transient passion? the mean advantage of a transient passion to load you with confusion to load you with confusion do you think i could ever relish the, uh, that happiness which was acquired by lessening yours now you see that Kate as a barmaid is showing so much merit, so much values um, to her as, as a girl. And the more um, Marlowe gets to discover how virtuous she is, um, how, uh, um, how many um, merits that she possesses, um, the more he is infatuated with her. So she entreats him. She entreats him. She begs him to to um to desist, um to go and not to think about this passion. And also, she says here that um she doesn't want to look um a mercenary, mercenary. When you are having a relationship, a marriage, or um or any, any sort of social relationship because you want to get um, a financial advantage from that. So she doesn't want to appear to be, um, to be a girl like that, okay, to, um, uh, to charm um, a high-class man so as to um, have a financial gain from that. She doesn't like to appear uh, to, be, to be so. Um, uh, uh, of course, that is um, also imprudent of her. And this is the very merit that really um, Marlowe uh, likes, her 
not being avaricious, her not being greedy or uh, money oriented. Because she can be that. Okay, he is he is wealthy. She can be that. He is now uh, infatuated with her. She can take advantage of that, but she doesn't want to. And this is really actually attractive to him. Now they are interacted as as they are having a conversation, uh, holding this conversation. Um, they are interrupted by Mr. Hadkasal and um, and uh, Marlowe's father because they, as I said, conceal themselves. Uh, behind a screen. Now, of course, his father accused him of not being plain and scrupulous because he asked him, um, uh, were you um, impudent uh, to Miss Hartcastle? He says no, but now they, he sees uh, or he witnesses the, the complete opposite of that. Now, of course, Mr. Hatkasal uh, says that, but you are um, uh, impudent to my daughter. And the word daughter, daughter, astonished uh, Marlo. And this is um, um, the moment in which he discovers, okay, uh, that the woman, the bar girl that he has been infatuated with is actually Miss Hartcastle not a barmaid. Yeah, here I have written this. Kate now reveals her true identity, saying it is her, that tall, squinting, and grave girl that he talked about um, to the bar uh, girl. Of course, Marlo apologizes. Okay, he, he has been apologizing since the very beginning of the play, so we are used to him apologizing. Um, uh, and Marlo um, decides to to leave to leave out, but of course Mr. Hatcastle de detains him from doing that. Um, uh, let, let, let's read this turn. Um, yes, sir, Miss Hartcastle. Yes, sir. That very identical tall, squinting lady you were pleased to take me for. Catseeing. Catseeing. Um, she that you addressed as the mild, modest, sentimental man of gravity and the bold, forward, agreeable rattle of the ladies' club. Okay? I know that you thought I, uh, I was squinting tall, too grave, and too sentimental for you. Because these are um, the very qualities that uh, Marlowe described uh, uh, Miss Hardcastle and and communicated to to the bar girl to the bar girl uh, Miss Hardcastle disguised. Now we go back to the subplot, which is the love affair, or, or the uh, the whole situation of Hastings and uh, Neville. Now, now they um, actually eloped. Okay, um, they um, they took off, and Mrs. Hartcastle and Mr. Hartcastle know all of that. But here Mrs. Hartcastle says it is okay for her to elope since she left her fortune behind with me. Okay, all I need is her money and her money is with me. And that is actually really greedy of her. Now, we have two, uh, we have two um, qualities of Mrs. Hartcastle. Gullible and greedy. We inferred that. It is not stated in the text. Now, at the very end of uh, She Stoops to Conquer, we see Hastings and Neville enter, um, walks in on all of them, uh, especially Mr. Hardcastle and Mrs. Hardcastle, and they direct their words to Mrs. Hardcastle, saying that 
they have given up the idea of flying off and they want uh, her consent they want um they want her consent of of their marriage okay uh, see in here Hastings said that they ha they that he has given up the idea of flying off with Neville and he he now appeals from her justice to her humanity okay Neville says the same thing that she she has been delusional to think that they can elope but now she is back um uh, to her prudence and she uh, she thinks that she has to gain to gain other people's consent now if they want to gain their uh, her consent on mr hartcastle's influence or on mr on mrs hartcastle there is something that has to happen which is tony's rejection or tony's Tony's refusal of of his cousin so as Hastings can take her for a wife um, they call upon Tony uh, Tony come do you accept um, or do you want to take uh, this uh, girl for for a wife or do you refuse to take her for a lawful wife um, uh, Tony says um, it is in vain to express my opinion because I am not yet of age so I cannot decide about that all the uh, legal decisions are in the uh, in my mother's custody but they reveal something to him and this is the lack of information as I talked about in the first lecture in comedies there are uh, there is lack of information which which creates confusion or, or creates um, uh, uh, comic scenes and this is one of them because Tony has been of age three months prior to the situation he has been of age three months prior to the situation but they didn't tell him they didn't tell him um, and this is what we call lack of information in comedies um, let, let's read this um, Mr. Hakasa says it is good they are back and calls upon Tony asking whether he, ref he refuses his cousin or not. Tony says, it is no use since he is not of age. Mr. Hardcastle says he is of age, but they kept it from him so as to conduce to your improvement. Okay, we thought if you do not know that you are not yet of age, that will make you a better person. Conduce to bring about a certain outcome or a certain result from uh, keeping this piece of information from you. Tony so happily takes her, takes her hand and refuses her for a true and lawful wife. Tony now says, uh, takes a novel's hand and says, I refuse you for a true and lawful wife. Of course, Hastings was so happy. Um, he describes, I think he describes Tony as a true friend. Remember, Tony never goes back on his words. And this is the one quality that I really like about him. They are all happy now. Um, of course, Kate and Marlo are holding hands now and they decided to, um, to hold a celebration tomorrow morning, inviting all the poor of the parish to celebrate with them. This play, I think, really is all about you, you reap what you sow. This is our last lecture. Now I remember uh, um, Tennessee Williams saying in one of his plays, there is rarely a graceful way to say goodbye.